Right, good morning everyone and welcome to this tutorial series on Darwin Data Analytics, leveraging raw Darwin data that DarwinX offers through its platform. And this data is of course free of charge, is available to all clients and uh, is in raw format with the aim of making it exploitable algorithmically. It is divided into two main categories of data, the first encapsulating quotes in a, resol in a resolution of seconds, and the second category contains time series and statistical data that you otherwise see on any Darwin listing on the platform. And this data includes data from graphs as well as numerical data contained uh, inside graphical tabs that is not otherwise displayed as graphs. So anything essentially that you see on the platform is available in the form of comma separated value files in this FTP data repository. To access this data, you'll need to request FTP access, of course, after logging into the platform. And once you've got your FTP access credentials, you can use it to then enter the repository. The data is offered raw. It is very, very large and it is purely historical. So it has been made available through FTP, but there are other ways of accessing the data algorithmically that we'll go on to talk to you about shortly. In order to understand the data a bit more, you can download the user guide if you are not entirely familiar with all the contents of all the tabs on each Darwin listing you've seen so far. Um, if you download the PDF guide, it will explain every single uh, component that is visible inside this FTP repository. For your benefit, we're going to organize this into something that's a bit more visually um, comprehensible. So what we'll do here is instead of going directly into the PDF file, we'll first visit the FTP repository that you can create um, in Windows in a few ways. So you can access it via FTP clients such as FileZilla, Core FTP Lite, etc. Or you can in Windows 10 at least add a network location. This allows you to specify the FTP server, your credentials that you've received after creating, uh, requesting FTP access. And essentially, you can create a network location in this manner that is then visible to you as a drive like any other drive in your machine. Clicking on this, if you've saved the password, otherwise it would ask you for the password, will grant you access to the FTP repository. And here we'll go through the structure of this repository to make sure that everything makes sense in terms of how you can access data. So first, let's make this a little more easier to see. And now we've uh, set our view to details. The structure of the FTP repository is each Darwin sticker symbol is the main root folder. So for example, if we go to Darwin LVS, that is the root directory for all data relevant to LVS, the Darwin. We double click on here and we see the quotes repository that contains historical quotes all the way back from its availability on the platform. And then we see some additional files that we'll go through here in a second. Let's adjust our view to details, at least in Windows. This wouldn't be necessary in FTP clients. But here is the information that is otherwise not provided alongside quotes in that repository. You have data to do with average leverage all the way through to um, trades, winning consistency, etc. Instead of viewing this here, now that you know where the data is, let's go over to a mind map where we've organized this information into several additional subcategories that explain more of where that data fits in in the context of things. So we've divided this data into four main categories, and these include execution, capital, style, and investability. Inside this repository, you will find each of these files, the supplementary nodes here after each main category node, located in the FTP repository. What each of these files contain is what we'll go into next. As regards style, um, we'll start with behavior. This essentially shows you the amount of orders per hour. The file positions contains information about positions held by the trader every day. Return contains information about the profitability of the Darwin over time. Rotation contains information about the daily rotation. The file trades contains information about closed trades aggregated by instrument. An average leverage contains information about the Darwin's volatility compared to that of the euro dollar. Moving on to execution, which is what we'll go through in the next video in more detail in terms of how to access it algorithmically. We'll start with order divergence that contains information about the detailed divergence per order uh, on the underlying strategy. And this information also includes the 
millisecond latency experience per order between trader and investor in terms of replication. Return divergence contains information regarding the Darwin's divergence. Monthly divergence uh, contains data regarding a Darwin's average and monthly divergence time series. Daily fixed divergence is a time series that's constructed as a simulation to see the effect of applying a fixed divergence of 0.00001 on returns, or 10 to the power minus 5 here. And daily real divergence is, is a time series that analyzes the effect of applying the investor's actual divergence onto the Darwin's returns. In the capital category, we have investment chart and investor's chart. And these two are charts that are already visible on the platform. So if we go over to darwinx.com for a moment and um, let's go over to any particular Darwin. So let's go find ourselves LVS, for instance. Each tab here contains graphical data as well as numerical data, and it is these files inside the FTP repository that house this same data. As regards investors chart and the investment chart, that is located under the investors tab. And here, this information that you see over here, capital and progress, investors over time, the amount of capital as it accumulated over time, etc., is information available to you inside the files. Similarly, any other data that we go through over here on these tabs is accessible to you through the FTP repository per Darwin root directory, as we've been talking about. Let's go back to the remainder of our category items, the last category being investability. Under investability come the following. Market correlation that analyzes the correlation between the trader's strategy with the market in different durations between 3, 6, and 12 D periods. Loss aversion that contains information of trades grouped by day and different profits, maximum, minimum, and closed. And loss aversion unadjusted VAR, which is similar to the previous loss aversion category that we just talked about, only this time the size of the trades is not adjusted by value at risk. Badges contain historical data about the Darwin's investment attributes. Trade loss aversion shows how the profits or losses would have changed in the best and worst case scenario for a Darwin. Trade unadjusted loss aversion contains information that is similar to trade loss aversion, but applied to the underlying strategy instead of the Darwin. Open strategy is a series of values showing the effect of opening a trade with a certain time difference, and this is expressed in percentage terms. Performance contains data about the Darwin's profit compared to that of several random strategies, and these are simulated during several time ranges between 3, 6, and 12 periods. Trade consistency shows information regarding the results of a group of trades per day. Risk adjustment contains information about the amount of risk adjustment applied to the strategy at any given time. Duration consistency is a series of data for every single position. Losing consistency is um, analogous to what we just discussed in duration consistency, only this time with losing trades and limited to the last 50 trades at the present time. And winning consistency, which is analogous to losing consistency, only this time using just the winning trades and limited to the last 50. Close strategy is a time series that contains a series of values showing the effect of closing a trade with a certain time difference compared to the actual closing time, and this is expressed as a percentage as well. Risk stability contains information about the value at risk variability or stability within the trading strategy. And finally, experience is a time series with information about the D period evolution per day. So that covers all the information that is present inside the FTP repository for each Darwin of interest to you, from quotes all the way to all these metrics that we've just talked about. Downloading the data in its entirety can require a lot of space, will require a lot of space and time. And uh, one option, of course, is to download the entire repository. The other option is to access this repository algorithmically or through a programming language specific to your task at hand. For instance, if you're looking for information for a particular portfolio of Darwin's or for a particular Darwin itself, it isn't necessary to download the entire repository and then physically query the repository on disk. We have engineered a Python class 
that allows you to access with your credentials this FTP repository and query it for information that is of interest to you. We'll be covering this class in the next tutorial and future tutorials where we'll explain and show examples of how to go about conducting research on the Darwin dataset in Python and importing all of that information into Pandas data frames for further analysis. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.